What is hermeneutics? Broadly construed, the term hermeneutics refers to the art or science of interpretation. The term is supposedly derived from the name of Hermes who was the fleet-footed messenger of the Greek gods, but also the patron of travelers, robbers, and interpreters. Hermeneutics has a very long history which stretches from antiquity to the postmodern period. In fact, it has been claimed that it is the common idiom of the latter period. Although the modern hermeneutics of Martin Heidegger, Hans-Georg Gadamer, and Paul Raku is generally secular in its inspiration, the art of interpretation was for centuries associated with the study of scripture and has always been a vital aspect of the three great monotheisms, all of which rely for their authority upon the interpretation of a sacred text. As we can see, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam all have distinct but related hermeneutic traditions. Frank Commode's book titled, Genesis of Secrecy, is an elegant late example of scriptural hermeneutics. The Jewish hermeneutic tradition of Midrash is particularly rich, with multiple layers of meaning ascribed to every word, and even every consonant of the books of the law, which are written without vowels. Hermeneutics takes a slightly different form in the Islamic tradition, in which the Quran, which means recitation, is held to be the literal word of God, as handed down by oral tradition prior to the establishment of a written text. The Quran itself warns against excessive interpretation, and hermeneutics tends, therefore, to take the form of attempts to reconcile the divine text with a sunnah, that is, tradition, made up of hadiths, that is, sayings and actions attributed to the Prophet, and the texts of the law, that is, Sharia. In antiquity, Hermeneutics was closely associated with the study of Homer in the various academies and with the codification of rhetoric that was such an important part of the Greek conception of education. Linguistic knowledge and detailed textual analysis were combined in an attempt to establish and evaluate an authentic text. The degree to which that tradition is perpetuated in early Christianity is evident from Book the Second of St. Augustine's On Christian Teaching which deals with the correct reading of scripture and in doing so outlines both a classic study in rhetoric and an early theory of the linguistic sign. Hermeneutics played a central role in the establishment of the canons of the three monotheisms and in the shaping of the Christian and Hebrew scriptures, as well as of the Quran. As in classical antiquity, Comparative textual variations and the elimination of scribal errors were the means used to establish the true text of scriptural revelation, and hermeneutics also provides a defense against incorrect readings and corrupts text. The process whereby the commentaries of interpreters were themselves incorporated into the sacred text gradually gave rise to the medieval Bibles in which the text itself was literally hemmed in by commentaries, and then commentaries on commentaries. I in fact, some Italian editions of Dante are so cluttered with explanatory notes that they still look like this. Scriptures was held to have a fourfold nature, and to contain both literal and historical meanings, revealed by grammatical interpretation, and mystical and spiritual meanings revealed by contemplating and communing with the divinely inspired text. Throughout early and medieval Christianity, allegory played an important role in hermeneutics, particularly when it came to deciding which parts of the Old Testament foretold the New. The rise of modern hermeneutics is influenced primarily by developments in German thought. Martin Luther's great slogan of Scriptura Sola, that is, by Scripture alone, represents both a rejection of centuries of papal authority and a return to studying the letter of the scriptural text. In 1513-1514, Luther taught a course on the Psalms at Wittenberg University, and had printed an edition of the text in which wide margins and white space replaced the accumulated glosses of the Church Fathers. After this symbolic art, the work of interpretation could begin anew with the belief that Scripture was its own best interpreter and that the plain meaning of the text would emerge if the reader surrendered to the text itself rather than to traditional authorities. The greatest single influence on the development of modern hermeneutics is the work of the Protestant theologian, Friedrich Schleiermacher, who is also a significant figure in the rise of historicism. 
Shyamaka's elements of grammar, hermeneutics, and criticism combines the resources of grammar, comparative philology, and textual criticism to produce a science of interpretation that can, in theory, be applied to any linguistic utterance, and not to scripture alone. Shyamaka can be seen as the source of the two main strands in contemporary hermeneutics, the quasi-psychological strand associated with his biographer Wilhelm Diltai, and the more strictly linguistic tradition associated with Hans Georg Gadamer. The classic description of Schleiermacher's methods and goals is in fact supplied by Diltai, who states that an understanding, Verstehen, of Leonardo da Vinci implies a global interpretation of his actions, paintings, sketches, and written works as a single unified and homogeneous progress or project. Philology, grammar, and historical interpretation combine to produce an understanding that is actually a re-experiencing, Nakfulen, of the whole of the work on the basis of individual fragments and a reconstruction of the spiritual leanings of the author on the basis of the whole work. The goal of the hermeneutic process is, concludes Diltai, to understand the author better than he understood himself. Under the influence of Diltai, hermeneutics moves from being an interpretation of a text to being a historicist interpretation of the situation of the author himself. As modern philosophy makes its linguistic turn, hermeneutics takes on a new importance, but many of the old certainties are lost as the notion of a true or final interpretation becomes ever more problematic. For Heidegger, hermeneutics is no longer a matter of textual interpretation, but an interpretative mode of being in the world and orientating oneself to it. Perhaps, the most important single influence of contemporary hermeneutics from Raku to Demand is, however, the adage in fragment 181 of Friedrich Nietzsche's The Will to Power, where the positivism which halts at phenomena, is refuted in the proclamation, no, facts is precisely what there is not, only interpretations. The paradox of any form of hermeneutics is that it is inevitably a circular process, there is no possibility of escaping the need to have already understood a verse of scripture before attempting to explain the process of understanding that verse. The detail is understood within the whole, and the whole from the detail. This is referred to as the hermeneutic circle, and it is impossible to step outside it. Meaning cannot be grasped from outside, precisely because there are only interpretations.